Okay, so we want to set up these doors uh, so they actually slide open when you get near them, right? So first, let's actually look at how, how they set up. So I'm going to select this door. I'm going to switch to fly. So there is this, is this door. This moves like this. And this one moves like this. So first, let's just open Inspector for both of them. So I'm going to select this one, Open Inspector. Select this one, Open Inspector. And essentially, uh, I'm also going to grab a Logix tooltip. So essentially, what we need to do is, like the doors, they will have two states. It will have like a closed state and open state. So to start, we are going to use a Boolean to control this. And first, I'm just going to use uh, use an input, but we'll eventually wire this boolean to actually come from a collider around the doors. But for now, I'm just going to use this true false. It is going to indicate whether they should be open or closed. Uh, the next thing, let's grab uh, let's grab this uh, let's grab Logix interface for both of these. He's recording a tutorial out there. Be the norm, so yeah. There we go. So now we have the Logix interface, and essentially in the interface we can access the position, rotation, and scale. And essentially what we care about is just toggling the position of the doors. So they're currently in the closed state. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another input. Position, as you can see, it's a it's three-dimensional vector, so it is a float tree. So I'm going to spawn a float tree input. Uh, so this is one for the store. I'm sure we're gonna spawn two. So like one of them is gonna be positioned when they are closed, and another is going to be positioned when they are open. So I'll do the same for this one. And now I will just uh, I will take this node and I will copy over the position when they are closed. So this is gonna be my closed position. And actually, I could have just. Uh, duplicated this one and we'll copy these over let's put this here and let's duplicate this one so we don't have to copy the rest of the values and essentially now uh, we have the positions saved we can essentially slide them into open positions so uh, it's just going to actually help with this uh, with the other one. So select this one and open it to, to the open position. Next, how what, what do you think is the best open position? Like how, how far they should go? I'd say probably all the way. All the way. Like see if you can get them out. Yeah, I guess. All the way. Um, yeah, actually a little bit trim showing. Yeah. That was nice. like that. Maybe this one a little bit more, or is this... Yeah. A little bit? Yeah, this, that one can go in, inwards a little bit more. Oh, I, I think... Uh, hmm. Also, it clips into this part. Yeah, I think I, I, we need to slide this one a little bit to the left. Oh, it clips? Yeah, this one clips. Oh, Actually, can you go over there and tell me when it clips? Um, right now it's not clipping. Oh wait, uh, no, yeah, from, no, from, no, 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 from the, from the, from this. From, from, from the door center. Which side? I go, like, to the door center. Door center. Like, do you see, like, uh, the upper part, like, when, when it's clipping? Tell me how far to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. I do on this side, on the back side, too, I see it a bit. Wait, do you want to be clipping? No, they shouldn't be clipping. They're not clipping. Not clipping. They shouldn't be clipping. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Then that would be good. Right there. That, right there. That. Right there is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right there is good. That yeah, looks good. Okay. Groups, you can see it on this side though. I'm oh, I see. Got a room here back here. Oh, I see. There's some more. That's fine. There. Yeah. <laughs> just on this side. Can see on this side. Oh, well, you can see the mechanism, I think. And we'll we'll put flowers there. <laughs> Nobody will notice. <laughs> <laughs> Put the 
flowers there, yes. Brilliant in space. We'll have a I think this one is a little bit more pro. Let's uh, let's look this again. Grow a little bit of weed. Actually, this one I think should go a little bit more open. <laughs> I don't mm. don't deselect. Okay. A little bit more. Was good. Did you, is there, did you add smooth transform to this? Okay, there we go. So now essentially, the, uh, now we have the doors in open position. So what we can do is uh, I'm gonna crop this one and let's see. So they moved along the y-axis. So the other other others remain the same. So I'm just gonna go copy this one over. Did you add smooth transform to the door? And. I will do the same for no, this door. Really. You didn't, uh, I, I will put this here. And essentially I have both positions. I have the uh, closed and I have open. So now essentially I can use this boolean to toggle. I can use this boolean to toggle between the two positions. So now essentially I need uh, another operator. This this is uh, the particular useful operator for toggling between two different states. This is essentially like a conditional selection operator. So what this does is uh, what this does is essentially I can plug two different inputs, and I have a third one which is uh, a boolean. So if I take this over here and I plug this here. And I look at the output. So I'm just gonna spawn a display. You can see as I toggle the boolean, this actually toggles between the outputs. So now we can plug this into the position. So you can see now the door itself toggles. I know the change is immediate, but we'll change that momentarily. Let's just set it up like this for now. So first let's actually see we want the doors. We want the doors to be. Uh, this should determine whether they are open. So when this is true, they should be open. So we're just going to swap these two inputs. You can also see like which one is untrue by hovering. So you can see this is on false, this is on true, and this is our condition. So let's swap these two. Let's spawn the conditional. Plug the first. Plug the second. Plug our condition and plug this into the position. And you'll see this is open close. So the next step is actually smoothing out the state. So because we want the door to essentially slide slide slowly when they are opening and when they are closing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab another node. And there's a very helpful node for this in math. It's called smooth lerp. So if I select this one. What this node essentially does is uh, it accepts some some target uh, value. It accepts p. And essentially, the output is the is approaching the input value at this particular speed. So essentially, it makes sure like if this changes immediately, the output will uh, change smoothly, depending on the speed. So what I can simply do is I have this uh, state. And if you think about it like this, essentially, this essentially represents the target position they should be at. So I plug this in. I will pick some speed. So let's say I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to say uh, 2. Let's put 2 here. And I will plug this here instead. And I will do the same on the side. So let's plug this. Let's actually use the same speed. So I'm going to put this to the <laughs> center. Plug this here, and plug this here, and now if I close, you can see there's no animates. So next, uh, what do you actually think about like this animation speed? Do you like this? Watch this. Let me see. Let's see. Yeah. That's a pretty good speed. Looks good. You can of course like uh, tweak the speeds. Yeah. For example, if I increase the number, really this would be significantly faster. But if I decrease it, say 0 0.5, this will make much slower animation. Mm. Yeah, I like the slow. I like a little bit slower. You like it slower? What about like uh, this one? This this is like halfway between. Like doing a seal. 
this is like halfway between the previous two values, like this? Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. Looks good? Okay. So... It's moving. <laughs> yes. So now, essentially, we have the animation done. And I can get rid of this. And <laughs> get rid of... Yeah, I don't have this here. Each other. So yeah. now, the actual step... The next step is to essentially make the opening trigger when the pro player is nearby the doors. So, what I'm going to do is I first need to create a collider around the doors. So I can do that by using the shape tooltip. So you see this makes cubes and essentially I can make a cube and we'll set it up in, in such a way where essentially when the player is inside of this cube the door will open, and if nobody is inside with a cube, the door, doors will close. So let's go about here, about in the center, center of the doors, and let's start making a cube. Um, next, what do you think? How far uh, the player should get like to the door so they open? Like, or how close? About about right about right here. Right here. So, okay. So let me within hand distance usually. Yeah, there. Like this. Yeah. So yeah, when you yeah. get into the yeah, cube, yeah. they will open. Seems about right. Yeah. Okay. It's like we're doing I'll look on the other side. This looks fine. So this this cube will essentially serve as the detection volume. So let's open Inspector for this one. So the first sure thing the, we are uh, gonna. Is... Oh yeah, it, yeah, it's good on this. Got to check it. Yep. So the first thing, we're going to disable the mesh render, so the cube is actually not visible. And under important step, you can see there's a box collider, which is set up, uh, is the same size of the cube, but we need to switch it from static to trigger, because only trigger, colli uh, trigger box colliders uh, or colliders of any kind will actually send events, and we need events to be able to detect, detect when the player is inside and feed the logics. So currently, this way, the way this works is we have uh, uh, there's in oh it's in physics in physics there's a bunch of uh, nodes which will detect when somebody has collided. Unfortunately, currently there's no nodes which will which will like simplify uh, the setup and essentially will tell, tell us when any player is inside of the doors. So we have to use a little bit of a workaround. So we're gonna use essentially on collision stay. And what, what this does is essentially when we, uh, this, will give a, this will essentially fire an impulse every frame when, when somebody's inside of the collider. And we'll use this to drive a Boolean value. So in order to receive the events, I need to grab the box collider with logics. I open the interface. And I can plug this as the input. And here uh, is here's the impulse. So let's open this. Uh, let's put this here so we can see it, see it easily. I don't switch to physical locomotion. And you can see when I get inside, it starts firing. So oh. we are so we are receiving an impulse. One thing we would like to do is we would like to check if the colliding object is actually a character, if it's actually a player. So we can we have another node, uh, which is, is character controller, which is a special type of collider used uh, for player interactions. So we're going to spawn this. You're just tripping out, aren't you? This will receive the collider that uh, <laughs> this node has, uh, this, uh, node has det detected. And essentially, this gives us a boolean whether this is a player collider or not. So we're going to essentially plug this um, go into flow and use the if node so we can filter the impulse so it doesn't fire, for example, when there's um, a random object. So let's plug this here. Let's plug our condition here. And this is going to be our impulse when it's a player collider. So now the thing we need to do we need to actually use this uh, to store the boolean value. So what we, we're going to do, uh, let's uh, create a register or a variable. It's called variables, boolean. 
and this boolean will be our new state. So I can delete this one and I can plug this here and plug this one here. Actually, never mind, there's a easier option. We can use, there's a handy node called boolean latch. So if we go to flow, there is boolean latch. And if I spawn this one, this essentially combines the behavior of a boolean register with a set of impulse receivers, which can set, reset, or toggle. So we're gonna use this one. So I'm gonna plug this one here. I'm gonna plug this one here. And now I can take this uh, input and plug this on set. So essentially when there's, when there's somebody inside, this will set our boolean. And now if I walk inside, you can see this opens. The only problem is it doesn't reset because like once it, once, once it gets set, there's nothing that would reset this. So in order to reset this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a timer. as essentially a node, this is essentially a node which, uh, which essentially fires every n seconds. So let's plug the number of seconds. And let's say we're gonna use two seconds. So every two seconds, we will receive an impulse on the output. And now we can simply plug this to reset. So let's plug this here. So now after two seconds, this will reset us, reset this to false. And we'll look inside. It says it's true, and it opens. You can see there's a little bit of a hitch. You see, essentially every every two seconds, it momentarily gets set to false, and essentially it starts closing a little bit. But like because I'm still inside, it keeps it keeps it open. But it makes it look a little bit weird. So we can do a little bit more tweaking to deal with this. So actually, the way I would deal with this is um, is I would actually filter this impulse, and I would need like to receive two consecutive impulses when when essentially this falls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use another boolean latch. And essentially this boolean latch will essentially serve as a, like a buffer for for these timers. So I'm gonna do do is I will uh, let's see there's there's on set. So when this is set I will I will actually reset this one. So when this is set, this will set this one to false. Uh, this means essentially this, this will then prevent other impulse from, from resetting this. So now essentially I will I will cut this and I will plug this timer here. Essentially after two, two seconds, this one will be set. But if there's something inside, inside of the collider, this will get reset right away. And now what I can do is I can use another if node over here and I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna take uh, the timer again and I will I will use a sequence to essentially send, send the timer to, to inputs and actually the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check if this one is if this one is true and if it is true I will actually reset this one and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this one. So what this means is when when I get inside of this, if this volume, this will set this one to true and this will open the door. It will also set this one to false, which will block the closing. But because the timer it fires every two seconds, after two seconds this one will fire. It will first go here, go to the if node, but because this one was reset, this one is false, this one won't go through, so this door won't clo close. Uh, however, it will it will actually afterwards it will actually reset this one. So when it fires again in the next two seconds, it's gonna go here. It's gonna check, and if this one wasn't uh, reset by me being still inside of the volume, this is now gonna go through and it's gonna reset this one and it's gonna close the door. So this essentially serves serves as a buffer that will prevent the small hitching 
So, keep, so you see if I stay inside, there's no more hitches after after two seconds. And if I get outside, it will close. However, because this is effectively doubles the timer, I can actually decrease this. So let's set this to one second. Now let's try again. So this opens. I see no hitches. This is working okay. And when I get outside, this will close again. So perfect. So see now this is this is a simple door mechanism implemented with Logix. Okay, so now with okay. the door being set up, uh, I'm pretty happy with the setup. Uh, the door currently doesn't have any effects, for example, like uh, fog. So like we could we could like do effects when they open and close, and they also obviously need sound. But we're gonna leave it as this for now, and we're gonna add the effects later. So the last thing we need to do we need to pack this Logix because we don't we don't we don't want this to be shown like this. So what I'm gonna do. Uh, I have this cube here, so first I'm actually gonna rename this cube. So let's rename this to door trigger. And since this actually handles like do door behavior, I can I can use this to pick my logics under this object, so it's in one place. So I'm gonna create a new child. I'm gonna name this logics. Logics. I can equip the logic tooltip again, and I can and now I need to grab this using the grip button. And while I'm holding the reference, I'm gonna set this as a pecking root. So now you can see this is actually set as a pecking root, which means that if I pick any of the logic setup, it will actually go under this object. So now the only thing I need to do is I need to hold the secondary on any of the nodes release, and this will pick my logic setup. And if I extend this, you can see it's all in here. So I can I can get rid of any leftover interfaces, any leftover nodes. Let's also remove the inspectors. And let's try the door. So I can go here, it opens. I can go outside, closes. Next, can, can you try it out as well? Sure. There we go. So there we go. A moving door mechanism implemented with visual scripting in NEOS. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. And let me know if you have any questions. And make sure to check out this one. I know I'll have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> And make sure to check out this world in the Hub, created here by by our next LAN. I know this little bit bit of my mind. Hello. <laughs> bye, bye.